Good morning. Welcome to worship at John McMillan Presbyterian Church and to everybody out there in virtual land, uh, welcome to you as well. Uh, obviously, Jeff isn't here today, uh, so we want to welcome uh, Reverend Samantha Coggins uh, to our pul pulpit. Uh, Reverend Coggins is a 2020 graduate of Pittsburgh Theological Seminary, was ordained as the campus minister for Presbyterian Student Fellowship at West Virginia University. She was pr previously served as a student pastor at East Liberty Presbyterian Church, First Presbyterian Church of Duquesne, and was administrative assistant for church programs at Brick Presbyterian Church in New York City. So welcome, Samantha, we're glad to have you this morning. Uh, just a few announcements, and I was told to make them few. Um, uh, this is the, uh, the last day for, uh, for flower sales, so if you uh, want to get them in, and uh, you can send your check to, uh, to Leslie or, or bring it in in your uh, offering, but this is the last day for that. Uh, Kids Club is holding their annual mile for mission on March 30th. Uh, the Easter egg hunt is April 9th from 3 to 4 p.m. Uh, we have a couple new uh, joys and concerns. This week, uh, we're praying for Linda Pellin, who had a biopsy this past week. Uh, for Scott Nowak's brother-in-law, Paul, who is in the ICU, and as we have been praying for the, uh, the people of the Ukraine uh, and, and the travesty that's going on over there. So uh, please keep uh, those people in your prayer and you, uh, prayers, and you can check all the rest that we have. And so uh, let's worship God. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Come, seek God in this time of worship.
Please be seated. Jesus told his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside, began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Peter, who had just confessed Jesus to be the Messiah from God, immediately denied the truth of what Jesus said and tried to prevent Jesus from completing his mission. And Jesus, the light of the world, is dim. Because we often act like Peter, we come before the Lord in regret and confession. Please join me in the prayer of confession, after which please uh, join in silent prayer. Eternal God, as enemies encircle and fears grow large, the distance between us feels like absence, and we come to believe you are hidden and concealed. Forgive our doubts. Forgive our lack of spiritual seeking. Forgive us when we make our faith all about what you might do for us rather than how we might serve you and work at relations with you. Amen. The Lord does not forsake us in our times of trial. Our God is a gracious God, abounding in steadfast love. Know that in Jesus Christ you are forgiven and be at peace. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. As Jim said earlier, my name is Reverend Samantha Coggins, and uh, it's a great joy for me to be worshiping with you this morning. Will you join me in prayer? Good and gracious God, thank you for the opportunity to worship together today, virtually and in person, on this third Sunday of Lent. Bless this liturgical season for us, God, that it would draw us closer to you and your will for us. For the people Jim said are not well, and for those in our midst who are absent today, we pray you hold them close, God. For those who aren't here due to illness or stress or lack of access, multiply their blessings and restore them to wholeness. For those in this community in and around Bethel Park, give continued safety and wellness. For those who are not safe and well, assure them, God, that the old can pass away and something new can happen. Give their hearts, minds, and bodies rest, and do the same for us all gathered here. For those in other pockets of the world besides our own here in Pittsburgh, especially the people of Ukraine, we ask for your intervention and for justice in Christ. 
make resources rain down like manna for the people there who do not have proper food, shelter, and clothing, whose children are in uncertain and unsafe situations. For the church universal, God, give strength to sustain us this Lent as we look toward Resurrection Sunday with both hope and weariness. We are weary of these pandemic days, God, and the impact that COVID-19 has had on our lives and those we love the most. Lead us to genuine reconciliation within ourselves and among other people. Hear these prayers, God, and hear the prayers that have not been said verbally this morning that remain on our hearts, which you know very well. And give us grace in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much to the choir. Our scripture reading today is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. 
Listen now for what God might be saying to you today. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to God's self through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to God's self, not counting the world's trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making God's appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts that they might be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, and so on and so on. The scripture passage I just read a moment ago starts at an ending, it would seem. Therefore. Where are we dropping in to this passage today? This letter from Paul, an early follower of Jesus, to the people at Corinth, thus the name Corinthians. If you flip back a few pages in your Bible to the beginning of 2 Corinthians, you might stumble on one of these familiar ideas that we affirm as Presbyterians. We walk by faith, not by sight. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5. The Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, gives us freedom and inspires us to act with hope and boldness. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 3. In Christ, we are being turned from one degree of glory to another, changed from glory into glory, as we sometimes say in prayer or hymns. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 3. If you go back even further to the very, very beginning of this letter, Paul says, I made up my mind not to make you another painful visit. So along with all of the ideas I just listed, we know that there is pain in this community. The people reading this letter have been dealing with their fair share of conflict, disturbances in the integrity and wholeness of the community. Last week, Reverend Tyndall spoke about the Holy Spirit, again, capital S, as in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, working like the stage manager for a play in the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, specifically about the Ethiopian man on the wilderness road and the Apostle Philip. Pastor Jeff pointed out that the power of the Holy Spirit can change the church by expanding it to include those who have been rejected by it as an institution. Here in our passage for today, Paul is specifically concerned with reconciliation which is the title I chose for this sermon. The newness we can experience through Christ. Paul is talking about a ministry that we can carry out as representatives of Jesus. Ambassadors is Paul's choice word. As Presbyterians, we affirm in our creeds, including in our affirmation of faith that we'll read later today, that God does the work of reconciliation through the Holy Spirit, 
which is everywhere the giver and renewer of life. That the Holy Spirit is what moves us toward reconciliation, just like it moved Philip and the man on the wilderness road. Just last week, I was entrusted with reconciliation while stopped at a red light in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. My husband and I recently moved back to the area after being away for about a year, not too far away in Morgantown, West Virginia. We now have a one-year-old daughter and we're getting reacquainted with the hilly roads around here, which often confuse me. Being new to this specific part of Pittsburgh, last week I pulled up a little too close to a red light. As soon as the light turned green for oncoming traffic turning toward me, a Pittsburgh left situation ensued that was not your typical Pittsburgh left. A man in a pickup truck turned into the lane next to mine with a bit of extra effort on his part to prevent himself from hitting our small SUV because I was pulled too far forward. As he did so, he rolled down his window, gave me a hand gesture, and yelled straight into my window that there's a sign right there telling you where to stop. No sooner than I could respond or gather my wits about me to process this moment of road rage, this man's vehicle passed mine, and somebody else in the vehicle right behind his shouted out the window, that just means he doesn't know how to drive. <laughs> At this moment in 2022, the word reconciliation is bandied about a lot. It's often the word of the day in American society. And I know it's supposed to have a positive meaning on the surface and at a deeper level, but frankly, I think sometimes the idea of reconciliation is really discouraging. <laughs> we hear in the news about the need for peaceful solutions instead of aggression and violence around the world. We see photos of strollers being left out for young Ukrainian children being forced to flee their country. This kind of reconciliation that kind makes us feel helpless. We hear from activists about a need for racial reconciliation. That kind of reconciliation is both too much for some and also not nearly enough for the people it is meant to benefit. We hear in our social media feeds a burning desire for political reconciliation after years of turmoil and division. Well, this kind of reconciliation is really nice in theory, but it seems sort of impossible. Raise your hand if you're willing to stop commenting on other people's posts on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter altogether. If only. We hear a strong request from Paul today. I entreat you, he says, be reconciled to God, which is certainly par for the course at Lent this season where we try to clean ourselves up a little before God, to get into right relationship with God, as Jim spoke about earlier in our confession, through what we're consuming, what we're praying, what we're devoting our time to. If reconciliation is not as simple as a ceasefire or a meeting of the minds, or total agreement, or a willingness to remain silent on Facebook. What is it? What is Paul recommending so ardently to us? What comes after today's scripture, later in Paul's letter, might give us a clue. Paul says now is the acceptable time for God's salvation and that as servants of God, Paul and other followers of Christ have somehow been able to process a long list of contrasting experiences. They've been treated as imposters yet remain true. They've been unknown yet are well known 
They are dying and yet are alive. They're punished and yet not killed. They're sorrowful yet always rejoicing. They're poor yet making many rich. They have nothing yet they possess everything. I submit to you today, friends, that because the Holy Spirit, capital S, is transformative, working a eunuch man toward conversion and working us here and now toward a new creation, maybe our ministry of reconciliation can hold many truths at once. Maybe we can learn being wrong sometimes and right at other times. Maybe we can be less than sure, starting our statements in conversation with others with both I know and I don't know. Maybe we can feel awkward in conflict with friends and family, shedding tears of both relief and grief as we work to resolve them. Maybe we can do something to help in Ukraine and at the same time feel utterly sad or downright infuriated about what is happening to people there. We can be embarrassed and humbled by one driver and encouraged and amused by the one coming right behind him. In Christ, there are many degrees of glory which do not take away from each other. Life will pose a series of challenges, that is for certain, even when we are minding our own business at a red light. Thank God for the Holy Spirit zooming in and shouting something that brings a smile to our face, enabling us to keep on driving, doing the type of reconciliation where more than one thing can be true, making all things new. May we believe it is so. Amen. I invite you now, as you would like, 
and or are able to sta remain standing for our affirmation of faith found on the screens and I believe also in your bulletin. Let's join our voices in our affirmation. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all people to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of people long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. calls us to lives of grateful generosity. Let us praise the giver of all good gifts through our offering today. Let us pray. God of grace, you provide for us in amazing ways. May our offerings provide for others and be used to further Christ's ministry and mission. Amen.
Friends, go now in peace. Be of good courage. Hold on to what is good. Give to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everybody. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you, those you love, and for whom you pray, today and forever. Amen.